good evening. We're going to get started here at 7 o'clock. Uh, thank you for each and every one of you coming this evening. We're going to start off with a moment of silence. Um, so let's take a moment to reflect on each of our own faith that uh, in our work here today. So. Say the bunch of leaves. Okay, Brent, come on up. 
he asked me, he said, are they going to make me say anything? I said, no. <laughs> no, we didn't. So, very good. We didn't, we didn't get over the team yet. Oh, yeah. We'll be all right. So first off, I just have to say, I am excited, quite like there, uh, that I am excited to be a Viking. And uh, uh, Mr. Craig's been calling me sometimes on his drive home and telling me all the wonderful things that are going on. And I've just been, been dying to get down here. So I'm very excited uh, to be a part of this, this community. And, uh, and I'm looking to do great things with Mr. Craig, with the staff, and with the students. So, uh, so I really look forward to that. I just want to thank everyone for the opportunity. And, uh, Again, I'm excited to be here. There is one issue, though, with this contract that you mentioned. I brought in a few bags, and I don't know, I'm a little worried. There were a couple things at the bottom that we'll have to keep a secret for a little bit from Mr. Craig. But, uh, yeah. Oh, you already saw it. Okay, so. Cats out of the bag. So, so anyway, thank you. It's nice meeting everyone, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to being part of the Viking family. Sixth 
break, and one of the requirements is for them to do community service. So every Friday, my graduate students will pack the food that goes home to be sent home. And we send home things. Um, we try to make like a meal. One, um, we, we send home spaghetti so that they can have a spaghetti meal. Um, things like that. Actual food instead of just snacks. We had improvements around Thanksgiving, right? We did. That's coming up. <laughs> and then Aaron Weedy has been very gracious in the help Viking Vittles out. Um, we received a grant from Kosciuszko RDMC operation. And we have also received a grant from Martin's Supermarket. And because of the donations, this is a, a picture of Thanksgiving and Christmas time. At, at Thanksgiving and Christmas, we sent home turkeys and hams. And at the time, we didn't have a refrigerator, so I stored them out here in the little uh, atriums <laughs> to keep them cold. But we have uh, uh, kind of become more sophisticated, I guess, and we now have a refrigerator, and we've sent home milk to go home, too. We also know that not only are they struggling um, with food, but also with clothing and just all kinds of things. So we've even had donations and have um, like a little shop set up that this week the kids are going to go shopping to get some clothes. Any questions? How much monetary support does it take? Well, we just started in October. <laughs> so um, at first when I started, I was only uh, sending out about 20 Viking Bills packages a week for to 31. So in the beginning, I could send home food for a week for about $50 to $75. Um, but now it takes almost $100 every week. And I service uh, 31 students. That's what I'm hoping. Um, I, I really don't know. Talk a little bit about tomorrow. <laughs> um, because of the grant that we received from our supermarket, Tricia Sloma from WNU is coming to do an interview with my people. That's Thousand or fifteen hundred. Tomorrow's a thousand, I think. Thousand dollars. So we're getting a thousand dollars from Martins for that as well. It's a one school at a time grant. So. But yes, we we would take donations anytime. <laughs> Primarily, it's 
been sixth grade help with this year. So. And then Suzanne will say, hey, I think I have somebody who is in seventh or eighth grade and might need some help. And then I just talked with sixth graders again the other day and I said, you know, this is a, a come and go thing. If you feel that, you know, now you would like to be part of like a news, let me know. And I had two or three come up to me and say, yeah, I think, you know, it would help if parents sent back permission slips as well. Um, along with the donations, we also had a hunter in in Akron who processed deer for us and so I was able to send them deer meat as well. So, if someone would like to, like to make a contribution to the public, who, who should they get a hold of? Do they contact Scott at school? How, how can someone in the public you know, make like a monetary donation? It would, be, it would be a contact to Teresa Weaver, our treasurer. They would just need to earmark it to the Viking Bills program. We've got an account set up here for that. So. take some time and, and celebrate our school so bear with me if it takes a few minutes to go through this but I do want to ask my school improvement team to, to stand up I ask these folks to be here tonight to, to come be a part of this they're a huge reason why we're, we're seeing the successes we're seeing from middle school and they're a great leadership team that helps us do a lot of the stuff we're going to see here so thank you for being here tonight appreciate it so we're going to talk about some celebrations first um, one of the things that we focused on through the leadership team and, and with the staff over the last few years has been school climate and culture, book studies, uh, a number of different things so that we're caring staff or caring school for staff and students. We have high expectations for staff and students. We can provide teachers with resources necessary to teach and provide students with the tools they need. One thing that's helped us do this is last year we received $45,000 in Title I grant funds. With this, we were able to help support teachers who wanted to go back for training. We had several teachers over the summer do additional training. I think Stacy, Linda, well, Chelsea maybe was going to work on some master's work. So uh, Linda went to Canada, got to go to a, a, a place in Saskatoon and study some my art skills and Stacy did some classwork over the summer so we were able to provide that support for teachers we were able to do a kickstart program where we had 12 nights back to school uh, the first six weeks where we brought in kids that were in need of extra support and, and got them a, a kickstart back into school with some reading and, and math support we were able to do two days of summer curriculum development where my staff was all able to do their curriculum and planning in the summer in July before school started. We were able to, to provide them with some, some funds for doing that. Teacher classroom improvement grants. Uh, the picture in the middle is this is Stu Baker's math class. Uh, it's not very often you walk into a, a school and see kids on lawn chairs up front listening to their, their math meeting. So that alternative seating stuff makes the classroom more inviting and, and helps provide a good atmosphere. We did book studies, uh, we sponsored some field trips. You'll see here on the left, these are students at Mary Lee and Logical Center. We'll get to that a little later on. Spider, one of them found. That might have been. Was that your group? Do you remember? Do you remember on biology trip? I don't Big spider, somebody found on one of their shoes. So. And then tech support, we were able to use this grant money to help pay for the Alex accounts for kids this year, which took roughly 10 bucks off of every student's textbook for the school year. So that came in very handy. Uh, I want to update on our one-to-one -one initiative. The, the devices in year two have been very reliable. Our connectivity is very reliable. Uh, Mr. Kavner is, is fantastic. He helped get us set up tonight. He is, he's on it for us as far as making sure everything's ready to go. So we definitely appreciate that. Um, and, and this is allowing us to do a variety of different learning opportunities is that two years ago weren't there. So we've seen a lot of change in that overall. 
Advanced coursework, our middle school students can earn possibly five high school credits before they leave here. If they're in biology, they can earn two credits. If they're taking algebra, uh, they can earn two credits. And then every one of our eighth graders just finished preparing for colleges and careers with Mrs. Kimmel today. And if they pass that class, it's off of their high school expectation, and they get a credit for it going into high school. So all of our eighth graders, if they pass PCC, out of done and out of the way, our advanced students in Mr. Kirby's class with this base biology class are earning credits. We're looking down the road at the potential for intro to ag, health and nutrition, possibly project lead the way. Mr. Craig and I have had a lot of conversations about this based on the new graduation requirements. So as we learn more about that and we learn more about options, we're going to try to make sure that we're aligning what we're doing here to make sure kids are ready to go to the high school and to be prepared for those new graduations. We do staff and student recognition at the middle school. Uh, if you pay attention to our Facebook page, we do a Teacher of the Week every week. We do staff recognition drawings uh, of our, our staff in the building every week as well that I publish and, and send out. And then our students uh, have a PBIS plan called the Viking Waves picture um, of students who are on a trip to McDonald's on a limo. Because there you guys love some great work. Done that once this year already. I believe back in the fall. This might be a picture from last year, but uh, good opportunity for kids. Uh, as Mrs. Early just talked about, uh, she's going to get visited tomorrow by WNDU to an interview about what she's doing with Gradway with the Viking Vittles. But the basis of Gradway at the middle school is our kids um, who could potentially be at risk uh, for graduation uh, or just need some extra small group support are in a specific advisory class with Gradway instructors who help mentor them, set goals, um, help them uh, to, to stay on track and, and to progress as they should. Philanthropy is a part of this. Viking Vittles is, is what sixth grade is doing for their piece. Um, we, we've also sent kids from all grade levels to, to help with the active building project over the course of the last year, just moving desks or books or whatever they need help with as the project. And I think we've, it was last year, mobile pack. So the last two years when the Grace College campus hosted the National Basketball Tournament, our kids have gone up to pack meals for the athletes in the company. So they've had opportunities to go off campus and do as well. Power of ICU is a, a program, a software program we use that helps us with student accountability. So Teachers each have access to this, and they go on and if a kid's missing assignment, they put it on the catch-up cafe list, and this automatically notifies parents if the kid's got a missing assignment, and then the kids have to attend what we call catch-up cafe, which is the first 15 minutes of lunch. They get the work done, they're out of there. If they accumulate three or more assignments on this list, they've got to stay Wednesday night with Mrs. Revere and I in the media center to get work caught up. If they get everything off the list, they don't have to stay. So, this is actually a picture from Thursday, and since the start of the year, 6,439 assignments have been put on the list and completed and taken off the list. So we've got about, I think that says 98.2 maybe, 96. We're over 95% of those assignments that get completed. So for us, it's a huge piece, making sure kids are accountable, they get the work done, they stay caught up. And Great so it's a great tool for us to provide up the day data of how many assignments are on the list, how many kids have an assignment on the list, break down by grade level, all those things. So it's a cool piece of technology we use. Probably the single most important thing we do here is professional learning communities. Tuesday and Thursday mornings, middle school teaching staff comes in at 720 to 8 o'clock. Tuesdays are kind of variable days. We may have a department meeting. Mrs. Revere and I may do a whole staff training session on some topic. Um, if we have uh, school needs like I-STEPs coming up, we'll do our planning for I-STEP during that time period. Um, those things we talk about on Tuesdays. Thursdays is grade level team. So our grade level teachers meet and plan the following week's activities for their grade level team. That Thursday is always going to be grade level PLC so that they have that time to meet, talk about kids, talk about data, 
talk about the plan and how things are ready to go. So there's not a single more powerful thing for our teachers to do than to sit down and collaborate and look at data and work together. It drives what we do on a daily basis in our building. And it is critical that we continue to do this. It's critical that we get the rest of our teachers who have a good summer institute there and get them trained so that everybody is on board with our goals and where we want to be at the school. I came to you last year and asked to change our schedule. So just a quick update, we went from eight periods to seven. So we extended the amount of time in each class. We eliminated the traditional study hall setting and we put in advisory. So every single kid has a 52 minute advisory with a teacher every day. And that time period is set up for mentoring kids, monitoring how they're doing academically. It's remediation time for kids who need help. Uh, it's our testing groups when we take NWA and I-STEP. It's a time when we do silent sustained reading and Alex math. And it's also the, the group that our teachers meet with the parent-teacher conferences. This fall, 400 or 425 parents had a conference in our building. So it's pretty effective for us. Uh, we're able to make sure that uh, communicating with parents, we're able to know kids well, know what we need to do to help them be successful. I want to give a shout out to Andrea Michael. I know Mr. Kripe will do the same, so the other principals in the building, she's a fantastic media specialist and she's come to you guys about this media center grant well right now what's going on in our in our media center is we have collaboration stations set up so the kids can come in as you see here on the left plug a laptop in they all have a large screen they can work off of in a group so that when they're doing projects or they're doing some sort of problem solving activity they can work together on those things uh, we have two TV screens in there, they're mobile uh, collaboration centers. Bottom right, uh, we've got a computer system, large screen computer touch screen in there. And then a couple years ago, we did a media center grant and we bought furniture. So the kids can go in, there's couches they can sit on to read. We have charging towers in there now for their computers. They can even plug their personal devices in there if they want. So, we're trying to create a 21st century learning environment that's functional for kids and teachers because we want them in the library as much as possible. Andrea is awesome. The kids want to go in and see her. Having all these other pieces of technology is huge. And I think we're real close to wrapping that grant up. I believe last year she talked to me. So. Another piece of our, our Title I grant was the purchase of a program called Project Wisdom, and this is a character education piece. Every morning when I do the announcements over the PA, we do a moment of silence, Pledge of Allegiance. If I have a few quick announcements, I go over those. And then I read the daily Project Wisdom piece, which is all about character. So every day the kids are hearing from me over the PA before the school day starts. Some message about good choices, being kind, treating others with respect, all those things that we want kids to be doing. And wrap them up and get them started on the day. Every week the teachers get a notification from Project Wisdom with some things they can do in the classroom which are great activities. So it's been a great cultural piece. We just ran a reality store two weeks ago, I think. Um, so reality store, some of you have been in and worked at, some of you may have actually gone through it when you were in middle school, but reality store basically is a month in the life of the checkbook. The kids get a job, they learn how to keep a checkbook register, and they got to walk in the door and go to all the tables, <coughs> come out at the end with money. So they got to pay taxes, they got to buy a house, they got to buy a vehicle, they find out if they have any kids or if they're married. There's a table that's a finger of fate where they randomly draw, and they may win the lottery or they may have to go to jail, depends on what they draw. So it, it's a month of real life for them, and at least it's some really good conversations in the classroom afterwards. Uh, kudos to Mrs. Kimmel and the Encore team. They really do a lot of legwork setting it up. And the 8th grade team has been great this year, helping them support to get it set up. And, and it ran really well this year. Uh, well, that was an awesome piece for the kids. Student activities. I want to turn this one over to Mrs. C. Ross. We have some guests here tonight she's going to introduce. But our first student activity that, that's probably the most exciting is that uh, we had a state runner-up this year and uh, our, our spell bowl team. So 
they were RRC champions, they had the top score at our regional site, and then they ended up running around the state, which is the best finish in, it's been four trips down there, or five, four trips. So I'll let her go ahead and introduce the kids, and if she wants to say anything about it. Eleven students that um, were regular members on the spell team this year, and these are some of them. I'll go ahead and let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm Jane Canada. I'm Kitten Stone. I'm Kitten. Very good. Um, so Jane is the only student that we've ever played in the state, and she had a perfect score um, on her round. She's got all of her words right, so we've never had. Kelly, you've been, oh, you, we didn't go to state when you were on my team, did we? Or I think we did. Yeah. So, um, Katie got all of her words right, which was really, really terrific. And Kayla Miller was the winner, our school champion, and she went to um, the Scripps National Spell Bee County Tournament, which she participated in that. Kayla, being sixth grader, she was our school champion. So, we do um, a spell bowl team that runs in the fall. And that's where the tournament, we have a tournament that um, is highlighted at Purdue if we qualify for it. And then um, we have another smaller um, competition that anybody in the school can participate in, and that's the scripts that we see on ESPN, you know, Washington. So, so it's our school team. Anything else? process of actually getting uh, a large <coughs> team picture for these guys that we'll have uh, somewhere in the building uh, to, to recognize them for their state runner-up and uh, we'll put on another banner which we've got the previous ones hung up in the gym. So, uh, as, as Mr. Seabrass talked about, these were our script spelling bee winners. I believe Braden went to Kosciuszko as well. So, um, Kaylin won our sixth grade, and then Brayton was the overall school winner, but both got to go participate in the Cosmos of the County. The students in art, we do an art show uh, each spring. And then what I wanted to highlight here is that the Fulton County, uh, I believe it was Zio, the Zio sorority sponsored a banner competition. So our kids were able to enter. The, the art competition, and we had several middle school kids last spring who actually had banners hanging up in the town of Rochester now that were part of this competition. So excited to see that, and then um, we have kids that are entering again this year. Choir kids, just this past Saturday, several of them were at Circle State at the Honeywell Center. Uh, our choral department performs the fall, winter, and spring concert. They also sing in our Veterans Day program. Currently, we have 76 students in the middle school who participate in the choir. <coughs> Band uh, also performs a winter and spring concert. They perform our Veterans Day performance. Uh, Abby Belisles and Andrew Burke were part of the IPFW Honor Band. Uh, did they get to actually participate last Friday or did they get snowed out? Did Andrew get to, did they get to yeah. do that last Friday? Yeah. So those guys got to go to IPFW and participate with several other kids from other schools in the honor band. And then Andrew and Abby Belisles received gold at the solo and ensemble contest, and then Howard received the silver. So those are some individuals that did well. We currently have 83 students in three grade levels in Maine. We do a lot of things in the middle school for community outreach. We had students uh, and staff participate in Unified Game Day, which I know we're going to talk about this year's activity a little bit. Uh, we've had several students go help in different fashions with the Akron project, mostly with moving. Uh, Hurricane Harvey happened early this, this school year, and we actually ran an underwear drive for Hurricane Harvey and collected either monetary donations or new underwear that we sent to hurricane victims. Uh, we had Unity Day, where everybody was asked to wear orange. We've got the Mike and Bill's dance and day rides to talk about. The middle school hosted the Miracle Tree event, and our student council students helped with babysitting during that activity. You guys had 150 families or something like that here, so it was a, a huge night. Um, we had a young man who lost his mother about two weeks ago, and we did a half day 
two Fridays ago, and our students brought in 1200 bucks between staff and students on that one day to help support Aaron Lewis at the main or former students. So we were able to get that money to be a church fund that's helping them now uh, in the aftermath of that tragedy. And then we're just starting our pace for Patience Drive this week. Student Council does a lot of leadership activities for us, but the single most important one they do every year is helping hands. They raise food, uh, they collect food and donations, and then our kids are able to go out right before Thanksgiving and help work at helping hands and distribute food. So it's a great opportunity for our kids. I know a lot of the kids sitting here from the high school have been able to do this in the past. It's a hugely valuable learning experience, but it's also a great community outreach. Jerry and Mary do a fantastic job. They connect well with all those kids and just a huge, huge, great experience for them. Very proud of our Veterans Day program. This year was the second time we've done this. Sarah Thomas, student council sponsor, and, and Chris Martin both have um, family connections to, to military service, and so they set it up and run it. Our band, our choir, both uh, play songs for the veterans that are there. We invite the community. Um, it, it's a great program, so uh, definitely a, a start in Catholic school just because of the, the way that that's, that's run by those families. This year, our 6th and 8th grade students were able to read and study the book Wonder, and then they were able to go to a private screening of the movie at the movie theater in, in Warsaw, North Point, and actually see the movie when it came out. 6th grade students were also able to go see here at 134th Street at the Wagon Wheel right before. Christmas, and that was part of a, a grant, correct? Do you remember right off the top of your head who that came from? The Wagonville Fire Wagon Wagonville actually. So all six graders in the county get to attend that. So this is the second year we've done that, I think, off that grant. So great opportunity to get our kids out to see some things. If you haven't seen the movie Wonder or read the book, it's a great, great character. Off-site learning, uh, we were able to take the students in biology and all the seventh graders to the Mary Lee uh, Ecology Center. Mm, I'm going to forget the town it's in, but it's up in the northeast part of the state. Biology students studied uh, native habitats. The students in seventh grade actually went to the Geological Center and were able to study the rock cycle there. Um, on right hand corner is a picture from the McMillan Center. Our uh, eighth graders went to the McMillan Center in Fort Wayne. It's a health and wellness center. They were able to go through some programs there in the day they attended. And then we had some students attend the Ortho Tour at Ivy Tech and the Ortho Training Center uh, this, this fall as part of the Kosciuszko County effort to get eighth grade students to go see the jobs in the Hands-on learning, we had to start over here. Um, we've had the planetarium here since I started almost every year. 20 years ago, but this year it's, it's new. It's new digital. Star Dome has a lot more curriculum options in it, so Mrs. Bates brought that in and was able to run almost every kid in the building through it to see different, um, different pieces of study with science. Uh, we had a big uh, unit on the eclipse, and we're able to take kids out and see the eclipse. They built the viewer boxes because the money we spent to buy the glasses for them to go watch it. We found out the day of the eclipse so uh, we we're still able to take them out and use the boxes to see the eclipse. And then both of our science classes in seventh and eighth grade have hydroponic grow towers. We're growing different varieties of, of lettuce in there now. So we're studying the pH of the soil, we're studying water in different facets of growing crops. So I believe we're on the third or fourth cycle now of cycle. Our eighth grade formal is, is a yearly event, but this year we were able to host it at the Akron Community Center. Um, so our kids got to, to travel off-site for that evening. Um, it was a good venue to have that, that dance and that activity. The student Council sponsors that. So part of the revenue goes to the Student Council, part of the revenue goes to the eighth grade fund to help support the Chicago trip. Social emotional sports at the middle school. We did a mix it up lunch this year with TVHS peers. They come over. We have six, seven, and eighth graders and teachers all mix up, random, and sit at tables. And then high school peers ran them through some questions and some get to know you exercises so that they could meet other people. They might not know me, otherwise me. 
Uh, Chad Varga, who wrote Bounce, came and spoke to high school, middle school students about making good choices. We had Kristen Miller, who talked about dangers of technology, talked to high school, middle school students back in the fall. And then we run a program in our health and home ec class called um, Life Skills. So it's actually a social, emotional um, skills development piece that's sponsored by Cosby High School Theater. So all of those are social, emotional supports we use in middle school. We use Alex Math, we do some celebrations for that. Right now we're doing a competition amongst grade levels and individuals. Fish um, on Rice, um, this is Theory Baker's class. We had a do some more Alex celebration in the first 12 weeks. Honor Society, um, class of 2020 is our, our eighth graders. 2021 is the freshman in high school. We'll do that recognition in May. And then um, this will be our sixth, fifth or sixth day of Chicago trip coming up this year. So, what we're going to do this year is kids will ride a charter bus, we'll go to Chicago, we're going to go to the Museum of Science and Industry for about three and a half hours. And then they'll spend the other three hours in Shed Quarry. And then we'll eat and, and come back. So in the past, we've gone to the Field Museum, we've gone to the Fountain, we've gone to see the Bean, we've gone to see uh, Lincoln Park Zoo, different places. But uh, this year, we're going to do the Science Literature Museum and Shed Quarry in the same day. So looking forward to that. And then this will be what you guys are approving later on for us. I'm going to run through these quick, but just an update on sports. Uh, we took the board, showed them the gym. We had water damage at the beginning of the year, and we're able to completely replace the gym floor. Uh, it's a pretty fantastic looking piece now, so um, very proud of it. Definitely proud to be able to get it taken care of at the cost of the involved. Cross country, St. Eagleton, Jenny Moriarty coach. Our girls, Northfield invite chance, third place in the Valley Invitational. Uh, boys were runner up at Northfield, and then Chester Miller finished in the top 10 in our season six graders. So they had a lot of success and a lot of numbers there. Football, seventh and eighth grade, both finished six and one on the season. They were both runner up in the, in the RRC North. Mike Bill, Bradley Kirby, Ryan Frazier, Phil Frazier were our coaches. Uh, they had pretty solid numbers and both great levels as well. Volleyball, Chelsea Brubaker coached our eighth graders. They were 17 and 8 on the season. Uh, they were runner up in the Southwood Tourney, which was an 18 tournament. Uh, I didn't get a report back from Jaden Biddle in the seventh grade, but they had a pretty solid season two. And then sixth grade, 18 was 6 and 4. B teams 2 and 9. Sydney Reed and Patrick Mass coached those girls. Boys basketball just wrapped up last week. The seventh grade boys went 14 and 5. Uh, under Sean Shepard and Kyle Ritchie, they were the Valley Tournament champs. They lost the RRC to the Metropole Champ Southwood. Eighth grade boys were 9 and 8. Derek Will John and Andy Pugh, a couple of coaches, those guys. <coughs> Girls basketball, uh, I don't have records because they're still going, but our seventh grade so far has won the Valley Tournament and won the Whitco Tournament. Uh, they're a pretty talented group of young ladies, coached by Tiffany Kropke. Eighth grade, um, I want to say they're close to 500 right now. Um, Mark Davis and, and Greg Hurley. Sixth grade boys are coached by David and John Lash. The 18 finished 8 and 4. The 18 was 6 and 4. Uh, they had a pretty solid season. And sixth grade girls basketball is just getting started. Jane Nelson and Greg Shepard coached that group. Wrestling is just getting underway. We've had two meets. Um, interestingly enough, the picture on the right is basically Owens. He's a seventh grader for us. And this was against McConaughey. We were tied. It was the last match of the night. He wrestled up 30 pounds in the heavyweight class and pinned the kid winning meat for him. So that's actually a picture of that happening. So it's pretty exciting. Kyler Kirby coaches our wrestling here at the middle school, same day as Scott Smith up in the Cheerleaders are coached by Leanne Hopewell, Jennifer Seacrest. Uh, those girls have done a great job this year. Uh, coaches and, and of course. And then Spring sports coming up, golf is coached by Carl Weaver. We play at the Waldo, so this is actually a picture of the Waldo restaurant of our invitational awards night last year. Corey Fields is our head track coach, and then we're starting a soccer program this fall, coached by Mr. Gary Kraft, so I'm going to let Mr. Cooper talk briefly about that. 
going to ask our two coaches to come up, uh, Chris and uh, Lyle, and Angie Lyle just joined us with Gary Kraft. Um, she's been an uh, assist as well. Um, just real quick, we've been working on a uh, middle school soccer team at least two years, I know, pretty hard trying to get that set up. And uh, the kids are truly excited about it. Um, tonight we're going to show a gift. Those are pictures that we have on the TVs. Rebuilding our soccer jersey that we uh, have. It be our initial soccer jersey for the TBMS uh, school here. And uh, it's really cool. The kids got a chance to vote on the four different logo options. This is the one we want. So <clears throat> the kids have a say in their, their first uh, logo uh, decision uh, for the soccer team. And uh, so tomorrow is call out, so the coaches will be here. And uh, we're going to find out exactly who's going to uh, want to play this year. We got a 10-game season that's uh, set up for the initial season. It's one way matches against five different teams. So we're really, truly excited to have these two fine individuals working with our children and uh, making them into excellent soccer players for the high school. We also have a new uh, soccer coach hired for the high school as well. He's working with them. And uh, so we're really excited. So we give them a hand like the so thank you. Fred, that took a little bit. We got a lot of stuff going on. So, um, my last discussion here real quick is just on data. Um, a lot of this stuff has already been shared, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. Um, our our report card from last year, we ended up with 69.5 on the D letter grade. That was lower than we had anticipated or wanted to see, but it's it's like two kids away from being a C without a 69.5. So we know it's critical that we continue to push kids and, and improve and get better. I shared this document with the board before, but this is sort of the, the chart that you use to figure the kids' scores and growth, and it's complicated. So our goal is to get as close to 100 points of growth on every kid as possible because that's standard movement is 100 points. This all adds up, it gets averaged, the pass rate gets added up, gets averaged, and then we get a score out of all that. And after this year, change again. So um, that's kind of what I want to talk about real quick. This is supposed to be based on the law of last year for iSTEP, next year it's supposed to be replaced by iLearn. iLearn is supposed to be a math and language arts computer adaptive test, which means every kid will get a unique experience based on the questions they answer. And it's supposed to be a one-time setting at the end of the school year. Right now, we do two sessions of iSTEP. We'll do the first one in a couple weeks, and then we'll do another one after spring break. Uh, I believe our seventh graders will take a total of 14 sessions. Six is, is either 12 or 14, and I think eight is 10 or 12. So it's a lot. Hopefully, the goal here with the new test is to cut down that time. It's supposed to be computer adaptive. It's supposed to focus on reducing test times, and we're supposed to get a quicker turnaround on scores. We said the first year, Cut scores being determined, it won't be right away, but we're supposed to know by July 1st, according to the legislation, what all the scores are for kids once we get involved with this new ITO test. We hope all that comes true as we've been talking about last week. We started NWA this year at the middle school. Uh, it is a computer adaptive test, so when a kid sits down and answers the first question, it takes them to the next one based on how they answer the first one. So each kid's got an individual path through the test. It's an individual score. It measures growth data. It's nationally normed with all the kids in the nation who take this. We are repl we've replaced SRI, so we don't have to do another reading test. It's incorporated in NWA. And uh, we're able to get growth and goal data for students who can share with parents as well. This is a sample of one of the charts we can print. It shows where the kid was in the fall, where the kid was in the winter tests. So we have a lot of data with this. We're just learning. It's new to us. We've only taken it twice. We're trying to figure out all the bells and whistles to make sure we do what we need to do with the kids' scoreboard. A lot of stuff here, but basically this is 
our fall to winter growth. Uh, we have solid growth areas in 6-8 math and 6-8 science. We've got some focus areas in 7th grade math and science and in reading and lang arts. Reading and lang arts tests are both over 50 questions. So we ran into a lot of test burnout with kids where they got to the end and just started clicking through because it was wrong. So one of the things that we've been working on talking with kids is having that resilience to finish the test and run through. So again, NWA is vastly better data than what we got from acuity. So we're learning a lot of good stuff with this. We're using it to, to try to really start to drill down and, and help determine what we need to do with kids. And there's a whole other wing of it uh, called Map Skills. It's remediation tools that we're just starting to dive into now. It's a, a teaching piece part of NWA that will take tests and results and help kids do some remediation. So that's another area. Panorama is, is something new that the district is just picking up. This is a, a data dashboard, basically. So we're able to do several things with it. We have whole school data, so you can look at overall school attendance for the year and chart. We've got individual data up here with the student. We can look at first quarter, how they did in coursework, attendance, behavior, social emotional learning. Um, they're color coded, so like five on behavior means that particular student got five discipline tickets over the course of that 12 weeks we can look on and see what they are. All 431 students are figured into these charts. It shows us the percentage of kids who are at each different level. 11% um, of the kids have a failing grade when, when I printed this. So that's something I can click on or I can pull out a list of kids. So we can target those kids for remediation and help. Uh, all the way across the board, we can look and see where we need uh, to be able to do things. So this is a this is a really huge piece where we can access that quickly. Um, and again, this was a, a corporation decision to bring this in. So this is this is happening to all buildings now. For us, WIDA testing, which is our students with uh, English as a second language, I believe it's wrapped up at the middle school, or we're very close. So, um, I start round one's done, we do I step round one come out February 27th to 28th. We'll do spring NWA right before spring break. I step round two is in April. I start round two is in April, so all of this testing is still coming up for us in the next uh, last six to five days of school year yet. So, you guys have any questions on the data side? Questions about anything we've talked about? Okay. That's all I have. Thank you.
Okay, we are here and excited to tell everybody about uh, Champions Together and our Unified Track team that we are starting. Um, go to the next one. Um, Champions Together is a collaboration partnership between Special Olympics and the Indiana High School Athletic Association, and they promote servant leadership among student athletes um, while changing lives of students with and without disabilities. Uh, they really promote awareness, respect, and inclusion of, of persons with intellectual disabilities, um, and Champions Together is trying to do things with students with disabilities, not just for them. So it's really just a team of students with and without disabilities working together and for common goals and um, to be on a, on a team. Champions together, they support many different unified sports teams. So there's like a basketball team, there's a, a bowling team. And if you remember last year when we presented to the board on our unified game day, and that's a program for preschool to eight and um, we had students uh, at the track this this year, last year, um, last spring, I should say, and we had a unified game day where we did all kinds of track and field events, and it's really a kind of a leader program into uh, like a unified high school sanctioned track or event or a, a track and field team. So um, Ms. Coppice and I, for the past couple years, everyone I'll do that in a minute but um, Ms. Coppice and I for the past couple years have really wanted to get a unified team started a unified track team started and everything kind of aligned this year uh, Mr. Cripe came on as principal this year and he's really passionate about um, us working uh, having teams with students with and without disabilities working together and uh, this is Ms. Coppice here and um, she's a special ed teacher at the high school and then we also have, I'll just do introductions now, I should have done that first. But I'm Megan Wilkes, I'm the Special Ed Director at Tippy Valley. And then we've got John Eckhoff here, and he's our school psychologist, and he's actually going to be our Unified Track Team coach. And then students, we have Addie Miller, and we've got Olivia Trapiti, and Wes Johnson, and then Miles Fowler, and they're going to be on our team. So they came to, they're going to talk in just a minute, but I'll keep going here. So really focusing on unified track and field is what we're, we're focused on. Now we're not going to do a basketball team or a bowling team just yet, but we're focusing on track and field. So what it really is, it just consists of six um, unified eligible athletes with disabilities and without disabilities. So working together, um, they do track events like 100 meter dash, 400 dash, 400 meter dash, 400 relay, and then uh, field events like the shot put and long jump. So it's really just a track meet. Um, and it's not meant to replace the current track team. That's not the purpose of it. It's just been another opportunity for kids to be working together and on a team, students with and without disabilities. Um, and so, go to the next one. Yeah. So we're going to participate in track meets this year, and there's also a sectionals, just like any other um, sport in high school. And then there's also a state. Uh, track meet on June 2nd, 2018, so hopefully we'll be able to make it to that. Uh, other districts in the area that have a unified track team, they'll be competing against. Warsaw has a team, Bremen has a team, East Noble, and Wawasee. So we won't be hosting our own meet this year, kind of starting small and just going to other meets, but hopefully next year we can host our own meet at Valley High School, so that would be really cool. Um, this is just one other step in really becoming champions together, which is, um, like I shared with you before, it's a, the partnership with Special Olympics and the Indiana High School um, Athletic Association. So um, I'm going to have Mr. Craig talk a little bit about what the convocation that we're planning looks like at the high school and then also just becoming a banner school. So there's, uh, there's four steps to becoming uh, Champions Together Banner School, and uh, we've really already completed uh, three of those four steps. And what those involve, first of all, is uh, you have to have a school-wide leadership involvement team, which we're doing through the Pierce class, uh, just for walker runs. Uh, they're very instrumental of, of, of working and just kind of leadership, getting the word out to the kids. Uh, the second part is that you need to have a unified team and complete at least one uh, event, and we are. And thank you very much to uh, everything Megan has done and Emma has done uh, to help lead that. We're very excited that Mr. Eckhoff has stepped up and is going to help uh, be the coach. 
We've had kids that are really excited. I saw Addie in the weight room working out there for their new fight for track team at school today. It was very impressive. Um, so really excited about that. So, so uh, you have to have a team, uh, and then you have to have a school-wide convocation. And our, our first uh, Champions Together convocation will be March 22nd, 10 o'clock, at the main gym. So if you're uh, looking for something to do that day, you're more than welcome to come. I've heard it's just a, it's a really exciting uh, convocation. It's really interactive. It's also uh, ran by Mr. Lee Lonzo, who was actually my teacher. Um, in high school, and really the teacher I connected with, and really one of the main reasons why I became an, an educator. So I'm really excited to uh, bring Mr. Alonzo uh, to Valley and bring his champions together. And then uh, we become a banner school then uh, when we have a fundraiser. We're going to hold a fundraiser here later this year. Uh, when you uh, get to the 1500 mark, uh, you get to raise a banner in your gym. So we're really excited about uh, working towards that. On the 22nd, we'll have three of the four legs kind of out of the way. And we'll, we'll start that fundraiser, and we hope to be there by the end of the year. So let's hear a little bit from our athletes and our coach. So I just wanted them to come and share and tell us really what excites them about being on the unified track team. So let's start with our coach. I'm really excited this year. Last year, as you know, we started our, our uh, pre-K to eighth grade uh, kind of game day, which we're doing again this year, so if you have a chance to come out, it was really a great event. I got to spend a little time training with the eight with our middle school students last year. Um, it was just a lot of fun, and it was just great to see them out there. They really enjoyed um, doing a lot of the events that we did. So I'm really excited just to just to see where we can take it. It's just that next logical step. We have that pre K to eight. Now let's start to get some more high school students involved. Well, I might have fun. <laughs> Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize to my parents. I just got off some practice, so <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. But, but um, one thing I'm really excited for is a lot of times uh, the special needs program doesn't get to participate in your, normal, your usual varsity high school football, football, basketball, plus was my long sports. Um, and another thing that gets me is you know, most of us have experienced around high schoolers before where they really say what's on their mind or how they can be brutally honest in today's world. And something that gets me is these special needs program, they're really good kids. They just have, they just need a little extra push to get there. I'm really looking forward to giving them the opportunity to participate in sports like every other person as one instead of as a separate boundary between. First of all, I just want to say, I heard about this a couple years ago from my first all high school, and I thought it was a super cool opportunity. And then when the team, Mrs. Coppice and um, Goff and Eastgate came to one of our classes and mentioned it. First of all, this spring is the only time I'm not in a sport, so it like, worked out perfectly. And I've always wanted to actually do track, but not have a full season. And then I heard about this, and I'm like, this is great. And then I heard about what it really is, about how it's a special needs class. And uh, first of all, I love hanging out with them. They're a super fun class. And so I'm really excited for the opportunity for me and also especially for them and how much fun they'll get to have and how we all get to come together for this. Um, basically, just what these other two said, I'm super excited for these kids and I'm also not in a spring sport, so it'll be good to be involved and I'm just excited. about um, another district in Indiana that's been doing Unified Track and they um, just shared their experiences. So a three minute video. Unified Track and Field is a sport in which partners and athletes come together to work and motivate each other to become a goal of um, competing, having fun, and becoming more team oriented helping the athletes um, become more social with those around them and more outgoing with people they don't know. Coach, I feel like it's probably a strong word. I'm really probably more of a sponsor or just an adult person, so I'm there if there's an emergency or just to help coordinate some things, um, just as that extra presence. So um, I'm really more just like an assistant and help coordinate things. Well, I originally, I ran track throughout middle school and I ran freshman and sophomore in high school and then 
I had always seen it in my track, and it had always just seemed like this fun, like uplifting atmosphere. Like, and so Kenneth Glazier, one of the assistant, assistant coaches of the team, reached out to me and said, like, hey, then you should totally be my track, you can still compete for points and then you've also helped me this So was really what drove me to want to start being involved in it that it's just a really positive environment. You know, these are kids that are so excited about having the opportunity to participate in something that I think many of us just take for granted because of course we can. And just learn to see the world through their eyes and just see all the amazing opportunities that they have. So it's, it's a very fulfilling group to be involved with. You kind of just have that bond and if like the athlete is um, harder to work with, you'll see like people reach out and like eventually that athlete will like cater to one of them. And so then that's really how far we go. It's not like you are with him because he is like in your station. Like you it's all about like the bond and like how they made it and what kind of they have. I think for me I would like to see students engaged in their passion. It's just seeing kids be kids and excited about what they're doing. And I just always, I like to do that. That's why I like to go to plays and I like to go to sporting events when I can and things, just to see kids doing what they really love. So for me, that's what I get out of it. What I think the best part is seeing the happiness on uh, everyone's face, like when somebody moves. Because I really like, as opposed to real track, you're out to compete. You're out to beat the other team, and we're out to beat the other team too. But we do it in a, in a much different way. Every every event, and every race is positive reinforcing. And this, it was always it's always a coming together at the end. It's always about everyone supporting everyone. To me, that's just the best part. Is it doesn't have to be about you. It can be just about us as group. slide. So just some pictures. Actually on the bottom right here too, that's um, our team competing at Warsaw. We were invited to Warsaw a couple years ago to compete. And this student right here is one of our high school students. So it is just really exciting. Um, you know, we'll have we'll be at a meet at Warsaw, so of course we'll make sure we everyone knows when our meets are, but the Warsaw meets close and so come out and, and cheer us on and so we're really excited to have a unified track team. Thank you. Well, that's it for Spotlight on the Valley. We uh, will be moving into the business portion of our agenda here tonight. Does anybody like to discuss you all to do?
Number six, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Melissa Wagner, instructional assistant at Mentone. Number seven, uh, approve the corporate resolution with First Federal Savings Bank. Number eight, approve the out-of-state field trip for the middle school eighth graders. Number nine, approve the high school FFA Sunday activity. Gentlemen, do I have a motion for the consent agenda as read? Todd makes a motion. Do I have a second? Stan seconds the motion. Do we have any further discussion on the consent agenda? All right. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And we'll move on to number one, approval of claims and payroll. We have one pre-written claim listed this evening. It's dated January 31, 2017. I believe that should be 2018 in the amount of $1,849,535. Our regular claim listing is dated February 13, 2018 in the amount of $148,434.05. And then we have two payrolls this evening. Uh, the first is dated June 6, 2018 in the amount of $380,380.74. The second is dated January 20 of 2018 in the amount of $335,498.40. I submit these claims to payroll for your approval. Thank you, Brett. Do I hear a motion for claims and payroll? Aaron makes that motion. Do I hear a second? Brian seconds that. Is there any further discussion on claims and payroll? All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll move on to the financial report. Okay, the board has been provided with the reconciled bank statement and monthly financial report. The funds for the month of January 2018. In summary, our receipts and our disbursements for January 2018 are uh, total receipts for all funds $2,687,751.53. Our total disbursements for all funds $2,763,999.99. Thank you, Brad. Uh, I guess we'll move on to old business update on the Akron Elementary School project. Good evening. Um, you see the board report I got put together. There really isn't a lot of narrative put in here, so I'm pretty much wrapped up with uh, the major work that was taking place out there. Uh, every room that we were in is now being utilized by the school. Um, yeah, there's the student drop off area right there, so that's pretty cool. Um, underneath that, it's a real big canopy that keeps out of the weather in case it was raining. Inside the next picture is another it's a real big vestibule area so they can actually wait inside before they go out or to get the stage area. Um, again, that's the canopy outside. So that's just half of it. There's it's a little bit. Um, there's a, a piece of the old gym. So that's now hung up on the wall, right close to the entryway towards the gymnasium. So that's a nice feature that that incorporated into the project. Uh, gym, bleachers are in, all the wall paintings are in. Uh, after that room's finished, there are uh, a couple of pieces of padding that we got to put on with rails for the bleachers so that they're in the close position for the event. Uh, gym 14 on the ice, and the architect is the boss in front of the nicer floor finishes that he's had on our project for a long time. Wednesday, so we this first action coming up. So we got all the school boards working, everything's, everything should go smooth. Um, these are some of the restrooms off in the cafeteria.
got for a strength town at all. So I should have put on the floor. So I'm not sure how those are. Probably those are just for events. So there's a game, uh, two big bathrooms over there, and then there's a couple of locker rooms in the gym. Uh, that's just there. So yeah, right there's the new restrooms that we totally remodeled into the existing portion. Uh, that strand of wall tile on all the walls. The sinks outside. This came out really nice as far as trying to hurry up and just get those put together. Um, there's a lot of rooms, got some benches. There's a couple of benches, a couple of rooms upstairs. A couple of benches. There's a couple of wood benches that we can put into the rest of the Those are coming in the next week. Uh, there's the media center. That's the big uh, reception area desk. Librarian. So the same way, same material that was built with the main the reception, that was another donation I believe the fight member. Um books here and everything's in there. So it's it turned out nice. There's a little like a learning recess to get down there. There's small groups around collaborate a little bit. And that's just the new looking inside of the hallway. As you walk in, you see all the different colors of the carpet pattern in there. And that was a teacher workspace that was created during that uh, to the center section of that big So that's a nice big space for them to sit down in. It's almost like a big lounge. Um, overall, like I said, we got. Uh, we're going to do a big walkthrough next Thursday or this Thursday with uh, Kristen and Spogs and everybody on the staff. We're going to find a walkthrough and kind of go through and make sure we've got anything that is concerned with the address and document with contractors so they can really fix it. Uh, for the most part, guys have been doing really well with the punch list. Painters have been working nights the last few weeks, so every day you guys can get more interest in the things that have touched on. That's primarily what is left. There's a few odds and ends that we're still dealing with, but for the most part, this painter touched up paint. So you know, it's good that he's doing it now instead of touching it like later or earlier than it gets dirty or something happens and they're going to keep it back. Um, yeah, it's been great. We'll talk there at the end, but remember that have some kind of renovations all the time. So, any questions or concerns or comments? But the playground, yeah, there was a piece that got damaged. They replaced it already, so now we can get the 40s or 50s here for three or four days with the mulch on that because he has it, it's all sitting here ready to be shipped out. So. Do I hear a motion, gentlemen? I'll make that motion, too. 
Thank you. Makes a motion. Todd seconds that. There's no further discussion. I'll ask for uh, raise your hands and say aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll move on to uh, approve drive for your school donation uh, to the high school by Kerlin Ford. And that's what we shared here with you folks for a little bit ago, a little bit ago, and uh, would ask the board to go ahead and approve that uh, six thousand dollar donation to Tiffany Valley High School from Kerlin Ford. Do I hear a motion? Stan, Stan makes that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mark makes the second. There, is there any further discussion? All right. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Move on to number three. Approval of the following Costco Endowment Youth Service Key Grants. Yes, each year in the fall and again in the spring, the uh, Keys Group, which is Costco Endowment Youth Services, students from the high schools in Kosciuszko County uh, are part of a philanthropic group that are given some funds that they can grant to uh, different projects in our schools, uh, in the county schools. And you can see listed here uh, who the folks are who were awarded grants this time around, uh, where they teach, what they teach, how much, the, how much the grants are for, and what the purpose of the grant is. Uh, we have a total of uh, Seven awarded this time for a total of three thousand four hundred and twenty-one dollars. So I'd like to number one, I'd like to thank those folks for taking the initiative to write the grants. Uh, we had three or four that were written but were not awarded. So again, I want to thank those folks for uh, making the effort to do that as well. And then uh, obviously, we want to thank the foundation for allowing our students that experience and uh, it does some nice things for the classrooms uh, in our schools. So we need more. Do I have a motion to approve the keys grants? No. Uh, makes the motion. Do I hear a second? Yeah, and seconds that. Do you guys have any further discussion on the keys grants? Right. Raise your hand and say aye. All in favor? All opposed? All right, motion carries. And then if there's no new business, we'll move on to our student representative, Dylan Wood. Ready you get the mic, buddy. Okay, in the past week uh, we had schedules handed out for all the students to fill out and then uh, track and baseball practice started and then uh, the FFA week is coming up. We do activities all week like the track to drive in and then we have a milk relay at lunch and the Sunday activity you just approved. And then we're excited for the new assistant principal. And then, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. I just want to thank Scott and his team for hosting uh, the board this evening. And I think if there's nothing else, Brett, we can.